Hello everybody, my name is Alesh Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing in personal finance. Please like and subscribe. In this video, we will be talking about how to set up your retirement portfolio. Now, before you shut off the video, the concepts described are useful in diversification and using a balanced portfolio with a cash reserve in your portfolio, even during the accumulation phase. Also, you want to be setting yourself up to use the strategy even while you're in the accumulation phase to avoid too much manipulation of the portfolio just before retirement, which could have tax implications. The bucket portfolio works on the concept that you don't need all of the money to be liquid on the day of your retirement, but should have some cash to spend if the market goes down. The bucket portfolio formalizes this. You don't want to be all in cash when you retire because of inflation risk, which means inflation eats away at your asset spending power faster than the assets grow when you have a safe cash-like assets only. You also don't want to be only in stocks because they could drop when you need to live off of those stocks. And then you may need to go back to work. I saw several co-workers in 2009 who looked like they should be retired already, and yet they soldiered on. The solution is to diversify the investments into buckets. The strategy is called the Bucket Portfolio, invented in 1985 by Harold Evensky, chairman of Evensky and Katz Folds Financial Wealth. Recently, Christine Benz, director of personal finance at Morningstar, has been championing it. The strategy has three buckets by default, even though you could have more. Bucket 1. This is very liquid and safe investments, such as a savings account, money market ETFs, or mutual funds, or short-term bonds. It is not intended to make a larger turn, but rather to provide safety for you if the other investments take a dive. It is money that is available for use now. Bucket 1 should be 1-2 to two years of your spending. For example, if you can live on 60000 per year after taxes, this bucket should have in it the equivalent of what would produce 60 to 120,000 after taxes. You have to know how much you are or will be spending per year, of course. If you are using something similar to a bucket portfolio while you are still growing your assets, bucket one can be a combination of your emergency fund and the dry powder that I discuss in the cash in your portfolio video. You could count old age security and CPP, Canada Pension Plan income, into this bucket as far as what you will receive in payments in the one to two years. Since the government payouts are as good as cash, along with any pension from work that you are certain of. Generally, however, the bucket portfolio is intended for investments, so I would suggest to exclude pensions out of your calculations. If you include pensions in bucket one, you could end up with more aggressive investment portfolio than intended, since the actual assets in your safe bucket one will be smaller, and the more aggressive parts of your portfolio, buckets two and three, will be larger. Bucket two is high quality bonds for interest income and large blue chip dividend paying companies, which is intended to be used in the near future and should not be very volatile. Bucket 2 should have 8 to 10 years worth of spending money in it, but since it also produces cash flow, it is more useful than Bucket 1. Bucket 2 is intended as a happy medium between safety and growth, producing some cash flow, but also not being truly risky. If the stock market falls, this bucket will not fall significantly, and together with Bucket 1, it will give you 10 to 12 years of money to live on, to give the markets time to recover before you need to start selling bucket three assets. Markets have never historically been down for that long, thankfully. And finally, bucket three is the fun bucket. It's the long-term engine of your portfolio, making sure your assets outpace inflation. These are the long-term growth stocks intended to capture the gains only stocks can produce. In combinations with buckets 1 and 2, you're able to avoid selling and locking in losses for market downturns in this bucket. There will be significant volatility here, but it doesn't matter if you don't need the money out of this bucket anytime soon. Now we come to withdrawing money from the portfolio. There's two methods, the automated and the manual. Let's look at the automated first. 
Automated is where you spend money out of bucket one only, and as you draw bucket one down, bucket two assets get sold to replenish bucket one. As bucket two is reduced below the eight year amount of assets, you sell off bucket three assets to replenish bucket two. This is automated, requiring little maintenance, but the results may not be optimal, especially if there's a lot of bucket three volatility. Also, moving money this way may cause tax implications since you are selling frequently. Now looking at the manual method, you can decide based on market results which buckets you're going to draw from and in what proportions. For example, if the stock market had a bad year, you would pull mostly from bucket one and perhaps use the dividend yield and the interest in bucket two to supplement the income with minimal selling from bucket two and bucket three would be untouched. Alternately, if you're brave, still in the accumulation phase or your bucket one and two are overflowing, pardon the pun, you could live off bucket one and two and perhaps put some money from bucket one and two into bucket three while the stocks are cheap. The other extreme would be if the stock market had an awesome year to sell from bucket three only to live on and to replenish the other buckets. Buckets two income would be reinvested into itself. Of course, the results are likely to be somewhere in between and you need to vary the strategy and be flexible in its use. Please note that the buckets are independent of accounts, for example, RSP, TFSA, or non-registered, as well as CPP and old age security. The general guideline is to keep anything that is tax deferred, that, that means registered, in the registered account for as long as possible, but the bucket portfolio works based on the asset type. So if you need to sell something because of its bucket, you may have to sell it out of an account that you don't want to. When you are still accumulating the assets, do so with the bucket withdrawal strategy in mind. Also note that buckets are intended with spending money after taxes, and so you will have to make adjustments depending on what account the assets are in. A TFSA asset will obviously be one-to-one -one with the amount you're trying to get to spend, while an RRSP asset withdrawal will need to be adjusted for the taxes that will be taken off, and so you'll have to pull more from an RRSP account uh, to get the spending money uh, compared to a, a TFSA. Let's talk about making adjustments and decisions about your bucket portfolio. To summarize, you will need to review the portfolio periodically and either rebalance it back to the two-year, 10-year, and remainder buckets as per the automated withdrawal strategy, or leave it in some state of unbalance due to the market movements. Bucket maintenance can get complicated. That's in part because there may be multiple accounts in the mix, but also because the right assets to tap for cash needs in a given year depend on the year if you're using the manual strategy I described. In a very strong equity market like 2019 or post-2009, Trimming appreciated equity assets will be the ticket to raise cash in most instances. In weak years like 2018, most retirees will be better off leaving stocks alone and instead pulling from safe assets to fund living expenses. Also, keep an eye on your spending rate for the last year to forecast how much you will need for the upcoming year. Buckets or not, a key item for retirees as they review their portfolios and their plans should be to take a look at spending over the past year. Have actual portfolio withdrawals been in line with your withdrawal amount targets? It's easy to get comfy with a bit of extra spending amid the very strong market environment that prevailed for most of 2019. Make sure to estimate additional spending needs for the coming year to be able to make decisions for your portfolio's withdrawals. Next, you'll want to size up bucket one. Once you've arrived at your cash needs for the coming year, compare that with your current liquid reserves on hand. If you've been steering dividends and bond income back into your cash bucket over the past year, part of the automatic strategy for bucket maintenance, or you have extra cash because you have recently taken required minimum distributions for your RRSPs, or you have cash left over for any other reason, you've probably filled up your bucket uh, one at least partially and will need to uh, lean less on rebalancing for the job. 
Subtract current cash reserves from the cash needs you arrived at earlier. The amount left over is the additional amount you'll need to extract from your portfolio from rebalancing. Check the buckets for the 2, 10, and remainder balance. Identifying overweighted positions in your portfolio will point you towards those areas that you can trim if you need to top up your bucket 1 slash cash holdings, as discussed above. For most investors, as 2019 wound down, for example, selling appreciated equity holdings, especially large cap growth stocks and funds, is a logical place to start if they need to raise cash. Pulling your cash needs from appreciated holdings may be sufficient to restore your baseline asset class exposures back to your targets. However, it's a good bet that additional rebalancing may be in order, especially in a year like 2019, which had been such a huge year for equity investment. Unless you're employing a static or conservative trending glide path for your in-retirement asset allocation, you may not need to top up your bond holdings. Bonds usually hold their own, even if they don't make a huge return. So to conclude, the bucket approach is an easy to understand way to organize your portfolio based on your anticipated time horizon, but it's not a miracle worker. It's a helpful innovation, but it won't save you if you haven't saved enough yourself. The same guidelines related to portfolio sustainability relate to bucket portfolios. Even a sensibly crafted bucket portfolio will be of no help if the portfolio expenditures exceeded what's sustainable given the size of your portfolio. So save, invest, and do it often and do it early. As usual, if you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.